Willow's making a Vietnamese chicken noodle soup tomorrow, so we're stopping at this Asian store to pick up some things that we need. This store here is in Port Charlotte. We've been here before. It's called BJ's Asian Groceries. So let's go in. This is what we got in the Asian store. Some rice noodles, since Willow's gonna make that Vietnamese soup tomorrow. Chicken noodle soup. Sriracha and lime. And then we had to go to a different store to get bean sprouts. And then we had to go, we're waiting in the car now for the kids because they went into the produce store down the street from our house to get some other things for the soup. been a fan of the tiny house movement and I think it's because it seemed like it would be a more simplified way of living. I've always looked for a way to live less stressful, more peaceful, and a little bit easier because life is difficult enough as it is, as we all know. I was watching a Tiny Square, uh, I'll try to put his channel here, and he had a great video, Why Build a Tiny House? So check out his channel. I want to share a little bit about our experience many years ago, wanting to live in a tiny house. A couple of reasons why people want tiny houses is one, that they don't want a mortgage or a very small one, and they want to maybe be more green. They want to live a more simplified lifestyle. All great reasons to live in a tiny house. The thing is back in the time that we were looking at building our tiny home, and living out in the country, and even living up the grid was something we were talking about. We didn't have really the internet that you have today to do research on how to buy property and how to build and what you can build and none of that. It was 1994 uh, when we were looking for property. Let's back up a little bit. Some people like to build tiny homes on trailers, kind of like an RV lifestyle. So that's not what I'm going to discuss today because that's a whole topic on its own because you can build a tiny house on a trailer just like an RV. That's something different. But what I want to talk about is for the people who want to live in a tiny home on their own land. So here's some things to think about. If you're on the internet, which you are if you're watching this, you're going to need internet connection. So if you're in the country, do they have the internet if you move out far enough or do you have to pay for satellite? Because if cost is something you're worried about, I don't think it's going to be a cheap solution in the long run when you add up everything. So let's talk about this a little bit. You're like, no, it's the cheapest way to go. And I have to say that's not something I thought about back then. So I'm going to share with you our experience. So let me tell you what we did. So we found a beautiful piece of property and our experience turned out fine in the end. We enjoyed how we lived for 10 years out in the country, but it wasn't the life that we had actually planned. <laughs> so when we bought the land, we got 10 acres and we had two ponds and we were dreaming up all kinds of things, you know, we build this little tiny house there and live in it. So we had this land, we bought the land, but the thing is we bought the land without doing homework first. That's a big no-no. You have the internet, no excuse, do your homework. We bought the land, planning on building our little house, and what was fun was that uh, we just rented an apartment down the street while we were going through the process, and we figured, you know, we do it step by step. We're gonna pay off the land, and then we'll build something. So we started clearing the land, you know, where we wanted to build our house, and but you needed tools. So this is something that can get expensive. You need, you know, your weed whackers and chainsaws and tractors, the list goes on, saws and drills and you name it. So what we did was, so we put all these tools somewhere other than our pickup truck or in the apartment. So you can't really take all this stuff to the apartment. We built the workshop. The workshop was a really nice size. It was 1200 square feet. 
Uh, we probably should have built it smaller, but we had in mind that we would maybe live in it. So we wouldn't have to pay the rent while we were building a house, but we could live in, in the um, workshop. So we put our tractors and our chainsaws and our weed whackers and woodworking tools because Rick could build anything and do anything. So of course we have tools. So we were thinking, okay, now let's, you know, let's live in this thing. It's big, it's plenty of room. We could put a wall here, see if we can get a toilet and a shower, you know, something real basic or just some running water. Well, the city or the town, and this is country, so you would think that we could do whatever we want, but no, that's not how it went. I don't remember the details, but it had something to do with that we had to have a house in order to get the septic tank, or was it... Uh, the well water, because there wasn't city water quite yet coming down. It was at the end of the street, like, I don't know, 600 feet down the street on the corner. So I can't remember the details there, but it was a no-go. We couldn't put water into the workshop unless we had a house. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. So we're like, okay, we could build this tiny house that we want to live in. So I didn't know there was a minimum square footage to be had when building a house. It was 1,200 square feet. So for most of you, you're like, that's not a tiny house. Well, it's not. I mean, technically it's small, you know, if you have a family of four, but it's not. So that pretty, the tiny house idea kind of went out the window very quickly. We still wanted to keep the house as simple as possible. So we built our house while building the house. It turns out that the rest of the neighbors down the street decided to come together and get the city water. So either we had a choice of city water or well water, which was about the same price. So our house was going up and we decided on city water, but boy, it just took forever. And our house was almost done and the city water was in front of the house. And I was like, well, do I build the well? I already agreed to buy the city water. What I didn't know was that the more footage frontage you had on your property, the more it was gonna cost to bring that city water to your house. And the other thing I did not know was the further back you put your property, the more it would cost you to bring that water to your house. So you had to pay for the water going across the frontage and then going back to your house. That was, you know, unexpected expenses. The driveway that we had, we thought it'd be fine, but no. <laughs> you know, more stone and we had to fix the pipe by the driveway. So that was all extra, which is fine. It needed to be done, otherwise you sink down into the mud in the uh, winter. So every year we were putting big stone on the driveway, or maybe every other year, I don't remember. And then we had to decide about heating the house. You couldn't just say, I didn't want electricity or you didn't want, because there was rules that you had to have, you know, everything in your house. So again, the electricity, it cost more because they had to go farther back into the woods to get to our house. And the same with propane. We put the propane tank in a certain spot so it wouldn't be right in front of our house, but close to the driveway. So when in the winter, remember this is Northeast Ohio where we get lake effect snows, snow gets up to your hip. So we wanted to make it easy where when the uh, propane truck would come that they could just put the propane in because that's important where you put that propane tank. Thank God we thought about that. <laughs> Again, the propane tank was far away enough from the house that it looked fine, but it cost more because of the how many feet it was away from the house. These little things, they add up. And when we bought the property, taxes was very cheap. So when we got it, we were like, this is great, low taxes, no problem. But when you build a house, oh my goodness, it was so much, <laughs> it was a lot. So my point is, that was all fine. We enjoyed the property. It wasn't the tiny house and it wasn't cheap. So if you are really worried about costs and trying to keep your costs down, do yourself a favor and do that research. Ask, ask, ask these questions. Ask if you could live in a cabin. Can you build a tiny little house in a cabin? Are you allowed to even do that legally? Of course, I know many of you say, I'll do what I want on my land. Well, that's fine, but I'm talking about legally. <laughs> Find out all about it. Is it in a flood zone? You can watch another video all about buying land. You want to make sure that you think about that frontage. Is there already city water or is there not city water in the area and you can dig a well?
can you build that little tiny house? And if you can, ask, you know, can I like not have a septic tank and, and water or well water or do I have to get it? Because you might assume, oh, I don't need to and this is just like I'm going to be camping out here, living here in this manner and they tell you that you can't and then all of a sudden you're into tens of thousands of dollars which you may or may not have or you may or may not want to spend. So find out about all those things before you buy the land so you're not surprised because it may not turn out the way you want because I am all for, like I said, the tiny home. Now for many of you, you need the internet and you want running water and you want heat. <laughs> so keep that all in mind, even if it's a tiny home, that these are things that are going to, um, you know, cost you. And when you have a piece of property, it's going to cost you just to maintain it. Unless you want trees falling on your house. But if, if you don't have trees on your property, maybe that's not something you need to worry too much about. And of course, there's grass to cut. But some of you say, well, I'll just get some goats. And, you know, many of you do. Some of you watching this might have a tiny house and it worked out great. You've got your goats and whatever animals and you're eating up the what little grass you might have. But... Even you folks know that, you know, there's veterinarian bills unless you take care of it yourself. That's another thing. How skilled are you at many things? Can you build your own home? If not, you have to pay someone to do it. Are you able to chainsaw trees down? Do you know, are you physically capable of doing it and chopping wood if you're young? Then maybe so, but for people getting a little bit older, maybe not. How close is the closest hospital? You break your leg. If you cut your leg with a chainsaw, is there an emergency room nearby? If not, what are you going to do? So there's so many pros to being out in the country and having this piece of property that money may not be an issue. But I just want to make sure before you jump to this idea that you have money or make sure you have the skill. Because even then, this great channel I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this man, he knows about reclaimed uh, wood and able to get things and he knows how to build things himself. But many people don't know how to do these things. And if you are also need to work, get a job somewhere, how close are you to a job? How are you going to make a living? Because I know many say, I can live off the land. But if it's your land, it's different. If you're on somebody else's land, you're paying them some rent or doing them favors. That's, that's a whole other topic. This video is talking about getting your land and building that tiny house. Where can you do that? I'm sure there's plenty of places. I bet definitely out west. There's definitely lots of land and elsewhere in this country that I don't even know about where you can build that tiny house and do it your way, however you want. It's just you need to find out where. I don't know the answer to that. And hopefully, if you know the answer, comment below and that will help others follow their dreams of having that tiny home, follow their dream of doing this uh, type of lifestyle. It really helps when we help each other out with information because sometimes information is hard to come by. I think we all need more information on this particular topic because I did type in tiny homes or why live in tiny homes and that's how I found this channel that I'm talking about. But many of them are talking about you know, how to build it or what it's like living in it, but they don't tell you the expenses of living in it. Just like RV living. Many of you have gotten into RV living because you thought it might be more affordable. And maybe it is in some cases if you're boondocking. But for those of you who wanted to have your own land or you want to stay, you know, where there's water and <laughs> electricity and that type of thing, you find out that it's costing you more than you thought. Even if you bought a used uh, vehicle, but you end up, even if you could fix it yourself, you find that parts cost. It's the same with the house. So my point is, there's no easy way to live a life, but you got to live the life that you want to live. And when you're done living a certain way, you could always move on to another way of living. So there's nothing wrong with that. You want to try living in a tiny home, then you should have the money you need to do it. Just do it. And if it's not something you want to do, then you try something else. I know there's a show, the Tiny Home Show on TV. I'm sure if you're watching this video, then you've probably have seen that too, where they use those shipping containers and they build these really cool tiny apartment homes. And they're actually like in cities, these eco cities, eco-friendly cities. You can live in a, in a city, but I don't think it's inexpensive like many people think. Now, if you're just being green and you don't care about the money, that's another story. I just want to bring the awareness of the money part because many young people are talking about it and I'm like, 
Well, I hope they're not going to make the mistakes I did and not question. But the young people today are pretty darn smart, and with the internet, you can find out anything. So, boy, I wish I had it when we had purchased the property. But you know what? I think I would have purchased it anyways because it was absolutely beautiful. And we really enjoyed our time there. So that's all I have for you on that topic. Uh, I am planning on doing live streaming soon. And we could talk about this topic or any other topic that you would like. Comment below and let me know what you think about tiny homes. Would you like to live in a tiny home? It's definitely going to be more affordable the smaller your home because you'll have less um, utility bills. The taxes will be less. Yeah, upkeep will be less, all that. So it's definitely going to be less than a larger home. But a tiny, tiny home, you know, a tiny house, what people are thinking about when they say tiny house, it's not as affordable, I don't think, as one would think, unless you find property that allows you to do whatever you want. And then, yes, I would say um, it would be more affordable. But with that, uh, you will not have the things that you might want. Like I said, the internet or the other things that people may want when when living somewhere, especially if you have children or want to be near um, hospitals or doctor visits. But everybody's different. Some people can care less about being near the hospital or the doctors or and don't go, and that's okay. Uh, so you just need to find out what's good for you and your family. We all live differently at different times in our life. It's definitely an adventure to go on this path. And uh, if you really want to do it, I say you should. And everything you do in life is a learning experience. So whatever you do, it's never a failure. If it didn't work out, I don't believe that you failed. You have this information. You've, you could use it for your next adventure. And that next adventure, same thing. You might do it for a little bit. It didn't work out the way you thought. It's not a failure. You just got more information take that and move on and it's like that for the rest of our lives you just keep learning and moving forward and you know it's see what happens it it's what makes it all exciting if we didn't have all these ups and downs in life it sure would be boring if you want to watch my live stream i would highly recommend you click that notification bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified when i go live because sometimes you might be able to show up and sometimes you might not be able to or I might just decide to do one out of the blue just because I have something to say. And if you have that button clicked on and it bings and you happen to be free, then you could join me and we could chit chat. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Please subscribe and share to grow this channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye.